Hi there and welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies. So in today's video we're going to be diving into an exciting way to elevate your gardening game and that is bringing your garden indoors and embracing the world of hydroponics. So whether you're looking for a fun and rewarding hobby to do during those long cold winter months or you just want to be able to grow food indoors all year round, indoor hydroponics is a fantastic solution. So join me as I show a step-by-step -step process of transferring some of your outdoor garden plants into a hydroponic setup. So there are a few different ways that you can start setting up your vegetables, fruits, herbs using the hydroponic method. The traditional one would be starting your seeds indoors, which is what I did with this tomato. This is a sun gold cherry tomato plant that I started from seed indoors just by using a wet paper towel method. And once those little seeds started to sprout, I transferred them into some rock wool and with the clay balls to kind of give it stability and just continue to keep it moist and in the light until it got to this past that two leaf stage started to shoot out some roots here at the bottom and then it was ready to get it set up in a nutrient solution so as far as bringing stuff from your garden it's very easy to take cuttings from different types of plants that will root well and then you can get them set up in the hydroponics so this was a runner that i cut from one of my strawberry plants outdoors about a month ago i just brought it in and have had a couple of these going in water just refreshing that water every week or so and as you can see they've started to sprout out a lot of little roots here so this one here i think we will set up in a hydroponic system you can also do that with tomatoes this is a tomato plant that is a bush variety it's called the prairie pride it produces nice uh, small sized tomatoes it did really well in my outdoor garden so i thought maybe i could try to bring a cutting in and root it and get it set up and see if we can get some more tomatoes this winter so as you can see the top kind of dies off which is natural it's mainly the roots that we want to uh, thrive so we're going to get a nutrient solution ready for this and set it up as well you can also dig out a plant and bring it indoors after you've washed the roots real thoroughly. I've done it with strawberries and peppers, and I plan to do it with another pepper plant this uh, in a couple weeks, and I will probably do a video, so stay tuned for that coming to the channel. So the first thing we want to get doing is set up this plant in one of our net cups. This is a three inch size, and you just want to be able to make it so that at least a couple of those roots are coming through the bottom just so that they can find that nutrient water doesn't have to be very much and then we're going to use our clay balls here so these clay pebbles offer stability around your plants when you are setting them up in the net cup so you just kind of put them around they also help keep the light from getting through to your nutrient water just gently push it around kind of make sure that your plant is centered as good as possible try not to cause too much pressure on those little tiny roots so with this method you don't have to worry about any growing medium other than the clay balls if you were starting from seed usually you're using a piece of rock wool or some other medium to start those seeds but for this you shouldn't need anything and as you can see i have one little tiny root there's a few kind of around here they will work their way down to that nutrient water so as you can see here we've got lots of roots coming on this strawberry plant so i'm just going to try again to work a few of them through the bottom of the net cup I'm going to cut off some of these pieces here to make this a little bit easier to work with the roots. I'm going to pull them down a bit. Get a few through the net cup here. I managed to get a few of them to poke through, which is great. Then I'll just start adding in the clay balls. 
I've done it this way in the past with pretty good success. It seems to take a while for strawberries to really catch and even though the roots are growing and thriving the top will look like it's died off and nothing's happening but it will eventually come. You just want to make sure you got enough clay balls in there to block out all the light. And we got some roots sticking out the bottom here really good. So, so now we are ready to mix up our nutrient solution. So for my nutrient solution, I'm going to be using this three-part system from General Hydroponics. You can use any type of nutrients you like. There's a lot of different brands. A lot of them are three parts like this, which are usually the micro the grow and the bloom. There's two parts um, solutions you can use. There's even powdered one part uh, solutions that all work as well. Usually I just try to follow the charts that are on the back of these containers as far as how um, much you want to add to your to your water. You'll find a lot of these charts have a lot of different stages and different measurements based on what stage your plant is at. There's the seedling stage, there is the mid growth stage, and then there's the fruiting and blooming stage. This one, for example, has five different stages that you can do your nutrient measurements at. So I'm going to be using measurements at the second step here, which is called the general purpose mild vegetative stage. So it gives a nice level of nutrients that seems to work well with seedlings and little plants that are just starting out. So I just use our tap water that I just let sit for about 24 hours or more. Because this is municipal water that's been treated, that just lets some of those, that chlorine and other treatment that's in there, just settle out and kind of dissipate. So mixing at the general purpose mild vegetative stage calls for five mils of each of these. The first one being micro. You want to make sure you shake the bottle really well before adding and also shake your mixture really well in between each. So what this is doing is giving you a good ratio of phosphorus, potassium, and nitrogen, which is supposed to be suitable for plants that are just starting their growth and just at that early vegetative stage. So I'm just going to fill this up with what I think is going to be enough water and then we'll do a quick EC test and pH test on the water. So EC stands for electrical conductivity and what that EC meter is doing is just measuring the nutrients or how much salts are in this solution. So when you uh, do some research on the internet this can be very overwhelming and there's all sorts of different numbers and ranges that they say you should have based on what you're planting. I've kind of come up with just kind of a general sweet spot that I use for all my plants, whether it is tomatoes, lettuces, peppers, strawberries, and just try to get it in that range. So with this TDS and EC meter, you can either do the PPM measurement or the EC. I always stick with the EC because I seem to understand that a little bit better. And then you just stick it in the water, take a reading, Press the hold button and you'll get a four digit number. So this says 1414. I just add a decimal point after the first number, so 1.4. So for plants that I am just starting up at the seedling stage or the cutting stage, I like to have an EC around 1.2 to the 2.4 range. So this EC level is right where I want it right now. Now we just want to make sure the pH is okay. So the pH reading gives you the balance of those nutrients in the water. The preferred range or the number that you want to have for a pH reading is somewhere between 5.5 and 6.5, which is just slightly acidic and it's what most plants prefer. You want it at that range so that it allows the plants to be able to properly absorb nutrients. If the number's too high or the number's too low, then you're going to need to adjust it. 
And right now it's coming out at 6.93, so it's a little bit high. So whether you're using municipal water or well water can always um, affect what your pH level is going to come out at. You can use bottled water or distilled water, but I find that a little expensive and I find that I can adjust my tap water and make it work well for my plants. So I recommend a pH kit such as this, the pH up and down from standard hydroponics to adjust your pH. There's also uh, natural ways that you can do this using, I believe, lemon juice and baking soda to bring it up and down. Something you can definitely research on the internet. So I need to bring my pH down a little bit. So you don't need to add very much, just a couple drops. I don't worry about measuring too much, but I'll put a few drops in here. Give it a stir and then we'll retest the pH. So we're trying to get it to that 5.5, 6.5 range. And you usually have to hold your pH meter in for about 30 seconds till it stabilizes and gives you a true reading. So it went down a little bit to 6.42, so that's got us in that range that I'm happy with. So I think this one is good to go. Okay, so the EC and pH is all good, so you are ready to set up your plant into the nutrients and get it under some lights. So just doing the EC test on the tomato plant here, I'm setting my meter to EC reading. coming out at 1600 so that is 1.6 so that falls in that range that I like to have between 1.2 and 2.4 so EC is good now we will check the pH and as I expected the pH is just slightly high it's at 6.73 I like to have the pH between 5.5 and 6.5. So we will add a little bit of the pH down. It's usually about one or two mils. It's best to do just a little bit at a time and you can always add more. So adding that pH down has dropped it down to about 6.25. So we have it in that sweet spot range that I prefer. So we are ready to put our tomato plant back in here. Let those roots start finding those nutrients and hopefully this tomato plant will take off. So if you're ready to start growing hydroponically indoors, be sure to check out my playlist in the description box below, which is a whole collection of videos that I have created all about hydroponics. And don't forget to subscribe to my little garden newsletter. I'll leave the link to that in the subscription box below as well. I like to share all sorts of information in my newsletter, different tips and tricks, recipes, YouTube videos, things that can just help you learn how to grow food indoors and outdoors all year round. And once you're subscribed to that newsletter, keep an eye on your inbox because I will be sending out all my subscribers a free PDF that shows all of the equipment that you need to get started in hydroponics. So this will be a detailed list of where you can find these products, what each item is used for, things around your house that you can use for hydroponics, pretty much everything you need to get started. So keep an eye out for that. So thanks for watching. We will see you on the next video.